son. It's good fish, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> and Delaware just barely River, hooked. Tidal fishing. Oh, Lordy, come here, son. He hit that right. Oh. oh. He hit that right when I threw the. First hey. crank. I'm Bob Murray. This is Delaware Valley Outdoors. We're doing some tidal river fishing this week. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Nice fish. Small mouth. <laughs> nice small mouth. Oh, lordy. Yeah. Come here, fishy. Oh, it's a nice fish, too. Oh, it's a real nice small mouth. Bring him over to you here yeah. in a second. Go ahead, take your time. You got some oh, shoulders these, on. These fish don't get tired real easy. This is like the working man's bass. <laughs> that is it's not bird. over till it's over with these guys. I hate. Why don't you lift them in here, Stevie? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Ooh, Lordy. Yep. Nice Delaware River smallmouth. Delaware River smallmouth. We're in tidal water. Yep. We're almost, well, if it wasn't raining and nasty, you would see Philadelphia from yep. where we are. Well, it's a beautiful day to me. It's, oh, it's a great day for fishing. It's a little hard for filming, and I know that. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. I'm here with Steve Horvath from West Marine, and we're going to catch some more fish. Woo! Good fish, buddy. Let's get more. Steve, we're fishing, obviously, tidal water. And what we, we have in front of us is just a bunch of rocks and some... Mm -hmm rip wrap but it's important to know when to fish that type of cover what do you like in a tidal water what do you look for as far as tides go with this kind of cover well a lot of times for rip wrap higher water is actually better to fish it only because more of the structure is still in the water if you were here there's one <laughs> no. little small mouth you want to jump I think I can handle this one myself. So as you were saying? You, uh... Uh, generally, I like to fish it with a little bit higher water mm -hmm. and the water moving because a spot like this, at low tide, most of this will be out of the water and the fish will be gone. Mm -hmm. And this, the, the fish move up out of the deeper water to, fit, to get up under here and feed during this, the high tide, but as it's pulling back, then they just move back off. Right now they're up Ain't she a beauty? That's another small one. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, for me, I like a little bit higher water, mm -hmm. uh, usually going out. And like I said, if you're here at dead low water, most of the structure that's here not, is not in the water anymore, and the fish have moved, they've gone. Mm -hmm. And you know, the crankbait's a real good bait. You know, you've had some fish on a spinnerbait. And usually, you know, fish out here on a riprap in the moving water are active fish. Yeah, they're feeding. You know, yeah, they're willing to come and chase and gobble up whatever you're throwing to them. Yeah, because uh, we actually came here, uh, well, we wanted to be here right when low tides, but <laughs> we'd be almost out of the water here. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, right here, we'd be sitting out on a rocky point that sticks out <laughs> off the shore that, you know, if you didn't see the actual current or ripple in the water, you'd never know it's here. Yeah. Like a submerged jetty that sticks out. So one thing I know we want to 
explain to everybody is make sure it's the first time you come down to the river to learn what the tides are and get a good map of it because you can run into some very shallow water awfully quick down here. Right. And and tide is tide is everything for a place. Places that are good at high water, you know, sometimes hold no fish at all or they're completely dry like this spot at low water. Yeah. And there's some, some places that when the water's high, you just can't get to the fish. <laughs> the, the structures, you know, under so much water. They're back so far. Yep. Like if this were a, a grass bed out in front of a, a pad of lily, in, in front of a field of lily pads, mm -hmm. you know, the fish may be way up in the pads where they're unreachable. Right. But then when the, when the water goes out, the fish are locked into the edge of the grass. Pads are just starting to show under here because the water's dropping now. We've got a fallen tide. What's going to happen to the fish? Well, it's like we were talking about before. You know, when you have the flooded pad fields and you really can't get to the fish, the fish will move from up on these banks out to the ends of these pad out to the end of these submerged pads and the fish will key on the edges and it'll be you know relatively easy easy fish to catch and then steve we have a an overcast day which and some some rain and <laughs> all the other stuff on there but on a day like this today color is important too now, absolutely you, what what colors would you say today would be uh, would you would you recommend today? Well, on a day like today, I'd probably fish exactly what we're fishing now. Mm -hmm. uh, something a little bit brighter, a little gaudier, that shows up a little bit better in the water. Something like a, a chartreuse or a fire tiger. Like the fire tiger that, that, that I have on here now. Right, exactly. It's got the orange belly and the, the chartreuse sides and the black to break it up. And the fish will key in on that color versus say uh, like a Tennessee shad here or something or like a different thing now what's called sunny day right oh yeah on a, on a sunny day and and relatively clear water Tennessee shad is, is a hard color to beat in the river with all those small shad and shad. herring in the river it, it's an absolute natural mm -hmm. so darker day a little darker bait. chartreuse brighter oh, day something a little more natural yeah. that doesn't stick out like that that's a good tip. Well, let's catch some fish on it. We'll try. All right. Fish and Tales, located in Wrightstown, is the perfect store for fishermen and hunters. For the fishermen, we offer 13 types of live bait, fly fishing supplies, and gear for both fresh and saltwater anglers. For the hunter, Fish and Tales offers hunting equipment and supplies. You can also purchase your fishing or hunting license. Personal service is important. If there's something you don't see in the store, we'll special order it from you from one of our numerous catalogs. For your convenience, our store is open early seven days a week. So stop in any time and trade your fishtails with us. Hi, this is Bob Murray. Delaware Valley Outdoors is now on the internet. Our internet address is www.dvoutdoors.com. Visit Delaware Valley Outdoors for the latest in regional fishing reports, weather conditions, maps, pros tips, and product updates. Why not visit us on the web? Get a grip. Gats River Grip River Anchors, as seen in the In Fisherman's Walleye Insider magazine, have been nationally field tested for precise anchoring under all river conditions. This special design features three prongs that grip rocks and boulders a metal plate to collect gravel, sand, and mud, and a slip handle that aids in retrieval. Gats River Grip comes in a 9-pound or 18-pound version. Stop by your local tackle dealer or call Twin Rivers Anchor Company. More details. Steve, we've moved to an, another spot again with the tide. You have to move with the tide sometimes. Exactly. And uh, what we have here is a set of weeds, I guess. What, what do we have here? Uh, actually, it's a it's a line of eelgrass, which is, you know, probably the grass that's most prevalent in the river right now. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it, there's a, a big difference between the, the types of cover that we're fishing. You know, we were fishing a what I call a hard edge. We were fishing riprap and and some rock piles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's a very hard edge. Uh, and now we're fishing what I what I call more of a, a soft edge or a softer structure, uh, which is a grass line. And fish move in and out of the grass line just like they move up and down on a riprap. And when but the tide's pulling them out, they're starting to move more. Exactly. Toward. As the tide goes down, grass lines get better. It concentrates the fish right on the side of the grass. And again, we're still throwing crank. I'm throwing a, a bigger, little bigger crankbait than you. And one of the things I know when I do fish spots like this, a lot of guys don't like to do it because they don't like to play with the grass. They don't like to pull the grass off their lures and they get tired of it. And not, I tell them, you gotta, you got to put up with that. One of the, the things that, that is a prerequisite in crankbait is, is deflection. You know, you, you have to touch the structure, you have to, to touch whatever you're fishing. That's when 99% of your bites come. Okay. When Exactly, the lure will either veer off to the side or, you know, when you stop the lure or whatever. And uh, you can tell somebody that's been fishing this because when they come back, you know, after a day of fishing, <laughs> the whole boat's covered with eelgrass. Yeah, I got <laughs> Piece here, piece there. Piece right there. That's something you want to hide when you're fishing a tournament. You got a bunch of fish. <laughs> clean know you're clean the up grass. the deck. <laughs> but yeah, eel grass is really coming back in the river now. You know, it's a lot cleaner, and uh, you know, it's really helping the fish population. Not just the bass, but the the perch, uh, the you know, the bait fish that the yeah. stripers feed on everything. You know, it's a real boom to the environment. Yeah, we're fishing. I mean, we're basically just fishing for large mouth and small mouth, which we just. <laughs> We caught some nice fish, the this, this smallmouths today. Sure. Uh, but there are plenty of stripers. I mean, it's not it's not uncommon that the next cast you could uh, get a striper. Or a giant catfish can almost take the rod out of your hands. <laughs> and it's been a lot of times when that's happened. On a crankbait. On a crankbait. You know, Bob, this rocky point over here ought to be a, a key area on this bank. Uh, what do you... I mean, okay, what do you look for? I mean, at points. I mean, there's all well, kinds of you have the the little rocky point here, and we're we're fishing in a line of eelgrass, and oh, well, it's even got a little tree thrown in. Yeah. So you know, grass is a good structure, rocks a good structure, and grass and rocks. Yeah, you got pretty much. You know, you have kind of the both best of both worlds. And with the tide going out, these fish will move down today. Exactly on the down, you know, on the the down tide mm -hmm. part of this rock pile, you know, is, is a prime spot to hold the fish in a, in a tidal river. A lot of times, too, you can get your boat positioned even going upstream with this and, and cast to it and have your baits exactly. coming down. A lot of times a spot like that's a multiple fish spot. Yeah. You know, you can catch a second fish off of it or you can come back in a half hour and catch another fish off of it. I think that's the one thing that I, I like about the, the tidal water in the Delaware River, especially this, is that uh, you, the fish move in, they move out. It's a lot different than lake fishing. You know, they, they, Ten minutes later, you could have fish on that spot, sure, and then uh, come back and catch more fish off of it. They just move. move sure, in one and out. one of the ingredients you definitely need to be a, a tidal water fisherman is persistence. Yeah, that's true. You don't have you, a lot of people run and they, they run it so far. I mean, you've got plenty of water in the river here to run as far as tidal water, but um, you could just stay on one spot. Uh, that riprap that we started with this morning, or, or the stretch of water that we're on this, right now. And just keep moving up and back on it because the fish will, right. will consistently. Fish will move up, fish will move, move off. You know, and they, and they do it on a on a minute to my, minute basis almost with yep. the tide. You know, sometimes you'll go to a spot and there'll be small fish on it, and the tide will go out a little farther, come in a little farther, and the size of the fish will change mm -hmm. even. Yeah, you, you'll take like a 12-inch fish, and then all of a sudden you come back and you start picking up the 16, right. 18-inch fish. Right, up. exactly. Yeah. It's almost like the weather this morning. Give it a few minutes and it'll change. Yeah. yeah. I know with the tide situation that we have, we have a, an outgoing tide right now. Uh, oops, <laughs> there's a bite there. Oops, get out of there. Uh, but the, today's conditions, I think, probably are uh, prime for what we want to be doing. Darn near ideal. Right, we don't have a, a overcast sky. We have. Uh, well, a little mist in the air. I don't think that means that much. We've got a slight breeze on the water, so as it breaks up the surface, and 
I think that's that's a key part too with with the, the river here. The, the the sunny conditions, like we had mentioned before, you do have to change your baits and go to those those more silvers and right. stuff like that. With the them. other thing is, uh, you know, when the sun comes out, a lot of times, you know, fish will be positioned right on an object. Mm -hmm. uh, where on on a day like today, the fish tend to be more scattered. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll catch fish, you know, in a given area in uh, in cloudy weather. Uh, but where we, where you have clear weather, bright sun, you tend to fi catch fish off of objects in that area, you know. But on yeah, a day like move, today, move right onto an object, whether yeah. it, whether it would be that rocky point, or exactly pads, or yep, they'll, they'll move tighter to the. To mm -hmm. the and that's the other thing I know we were talking about it. You can't be afraid to throw your crankbait or your spinnerbait up into no. <laughs> up into that stuff. Nope. So everybody's oh my, I'll lose my crankbait. Well, that's where the fish are, though. You know, you're throwing a five-hour crankbait or a five-hour spinnerbait or mm -hmm. whatever up into this stuff. You don't want to lose it, but it's also important to have the right equipment. I mean, I've been fishing with fellows that have a real light, ooh, darn it, uh, wimpy rod, and you get cut, and the rod's bending in half and, and stuff like that. Uh, what kind of equipment would you say that somebody should come out here on the river uh, and start out fishing with? Well, for me, the ideal crankbait rod has a lot of give up in the tip of the rod and then some backbone, you know, back toward the butt. Uh, one of the things with a crankbait is the fish tend to jump a lot and you've got real small diameter hooks in the fish. Uh, so with a real, real stiff rod, you tend to not have that forgivingness of, uh, of all that bend and, you know, you, you tend to lose more fish. Uh, the other thing is, you know, a good line. You're, you're bumping into stuff. You need some abrasion resistant line. Uh, for most of my cranking on the river, I, I use, you know, 12 or 14 pound line uh, because of the abrasion resistance. If I was crankbaiting in, in clearer water or places where you're not going to run into rocks and, and all barges, kinds of stuff. Oh, all kinds of stuff <laughs> down metal here. And... Uh, you know, I use a little bit heavier line, but in other situations, you can use 8 and 10 pound line cranking, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes with the clear water, the lighter line will get you a few more bites. But generally, you know, you have good water color here. And yeah, I, like to get a, I like to use the heaviest line I can get away with. And for spinner baits and stuff like that, about 10, 12? Spinner bait fishing, I, you know, there, there's two real schools of thought with that. Some guys use the same equipment that they do crank baiting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they do well with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, I use something a little bit heavier, six and a half foot, medium heavy, seven foot, medium heavy rod, uh, 17 or 20 pound line. Um, again, throwing in a real heavy cover, you're, but you're catching a fish on a single hook lure, uh, which to me seems to hold the fish better. And uh, with the heavier line, you know, you get the fish out of the cover easier. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't tend to lose as many fish, at least I don't, but there's a lot of guys that are successful with lighter line. I like to use the, the heavier line because out here, I mean, we do have a lot of structure that we're sure. fishing, the rocks, even the pads are abrasive, they don't, you exactly. don't that way. They really do, uh, they abrade your line. There you go. There's a good one. Yeah. Get in here. All right. <laughs> Decent fish. Sure. Steve, one of the things that we talked about was <clears throat> the little point that you had mentioned here. South side? South side of the point because you have an outgoing tide. Mm -hmm. The fish will position themselves facing up into the current. You have the current break on the top on the and point. I just pulled that. And there's your results. And there it is. Yep. They came right off of that point. <clears throat> I think that's something that everything looks so good around here if you're talking about cover and stuff, but you do have to learn how to position yourself. Exactly. A lot of times, you know, boat position is everything. And I let that, I let that, uh, bait, I just come out and let it flutter. Yeah. And he was right on the edge, yeah. right on the drop. Mm -hmm. oh. That's a nice little one, Bob. Yeah. Again, right off the off the pads. A little crankbait. Right on the bottom of the chin there. 
He was probably just swatting at it. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Probably more of a reaction strike than anything else. Mm -hmm. I think Fine. we'll need the pliers for this guy. Kind of got him right under the chin there. Nice little guy. It hasn't rained in about 40 days, of course, and we're out here the first day that it actually rains. But there's seasonal patterns that we have to look for on the river, too. Summertime, sure. spring. Uh, let's just talk a little bit, let's say like a spring pattern. What baits are are better in the spring and then work our way through the summer? Okay. Well, generally, you know, as the spring starts out, you'll start out at the end of winter. The water's really, really cold. And most of the fish have wintered up in the, up in the protected areas, out, out of the current, uh, some of the coves and stuff like that on the river. And, you know, that's where your first fishing starts. That water warms up the fastest. And a lot of that fishing's, you know, slower stuff, a real small uh, jig, uh, a little four-inch worm, something like that. You know, that's about the only two lures you really need that, that time of year. You know, as the water warms up and a, and a fish, you know, get ready to spawn in the coves, you know, then you could do, you know, just about anything that you want to do to catch fish. You can catch them on top waters, you catch them on worms, crankbaits. Uh, and the fishing's good, but still basically in the coves. Mm -hmm. uh, after they spawn, you know, the main river fishing like we're doing here mm -hmm. uh, gets really productive, you know, right through the summer. Uh, you know, the fish are out in the current. There's more oxygen out here in the current. Uh, and that's where most, most of the fish are. And, you know, you catch them on crankbaits like we are. You catch them on a worm, uh, spinnerbaiting, just, a, just about anything you'd, you'd want to do. How about sizes, though? Do you go up to a bigger size or a smaller? I think year-round, like we were talking about earlier, I, I tend to stay with uh, a smaller crankbait here than anywhere else. But in the summer, I do go to slightly larger sizes than I do uh, in the spring. Uh, the other time I, I start going smaller is like in September when all the baby herring are coming down the river. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the, the fish are feeding on really small bait fish, and it almost doesn't make sense if, if they're eating hors d'oeuvres to throw them a whole pizza. So, to, so we've downsized that. Right. And fall fishing, fall fishing is really great on the river. You can catch them in the coves and the creeks and the main river. The yeah, fish are, are literally all over the place. Yeah, I've found that uh, fall fishing, especially on the main river here, is just, it's incredible. You can have some of your, and the fish are feeding up and they're... They're, they're, they're fat, they're, they're, they're spunky. Yeah, they're aggressive. Yeah, the water's cooled down. September and October, I think, are probably the best. Right. And the other big bonus is, you know, you don't have the boat traffic out here that you do in the summer. Yeah. You know, we're out here on a weekday right now, so, you know, we're a little bit lucky we don't have, you know, the amount of boat traffic there is on a weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, but boat traffic sometimes influences the fish, can make it better or worse. Yeah. Those rollers get up there and start tumbling bait fish on sure. the spot. Sure. Muddies up the bank real good. Well, even wintertime still is still good fishing. I know there are a I've, lot of guys who uh, who fish the river in the winter uh, to the point where the water gets cold enough and they have to switch over to live bait. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the fish are moved into the coves and you know places like Tullytown Cove and Dredge Harbor. You know places like that get a lot of fish in them. You know, and you can catch a lot of fish. I know guys that fish right up until January. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as it's not too cold, uh, you know, the, at least don't freeze back in there. Right around Thanksgiving, it gets a little too cold for me. <laughs> the Tackle Box is sponsored by West Marine. We make boating more fun. Well, Steve, <laughs> we're here with the Tackle Box section of the show, and we did pick one of the rainiest days. Has it rained in, what, 45 days? We there. picked the rainy stay in July so far. <laughs> we did catch fish. And I do have to say, I probably lost the most fish today. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I did. Basically, we're fishing crankbaits, spinnerbaits, and a little top water, mm -hmm. basically, right now, this time of year. You can go to a worm and stuff like that, this four-inch worm that you had mentioned before. But right now, today, I think it's just that, it's just that crankbait, spinnerbait bite. And I think Perfect that's conditions. What, it, what it was. I was using fire tiger bait, and 
I like the size of this bait because it, it sort of looks like the the bait fish that are that are in the in the river. Uh, color wise, again, you had mentioned because it's darker day. Let's get that chartreuse and, exactly. and whatnot in there. You went with two other baits. Tell me a little bit about this bait here. Uh, well, it, that bait, I believe, the, the color of it is called Parrot, I believe. It's, it's getting to be a real popular color. Uh, it's got a little little orange on the throat. Uh, it's got some chartreuse and blue. And, you know, they're, they're all good colors individually, but put together, they, they make a real good bait. Uh, but again, I pretty much reserve that for, you know, cloudier, nastier conditions. You know, it's probably not a lure I would fish unless the water was excessively muddy on a clear day. So this is a, your, dark, your darker Definitely. day bait. And about the, the size of the bait and how far it, uh, it well, dives? Well, that, that bait dives maybe about eight feet on, on 12 pound line on a good cast. Uh, and one of, the, one of the good things about that size bait is it doesn't exclude any fish. The small fish eat it, the bigger fish eat it. And uh, it, it matches the, the size of the forage in the river pretty good. I mean, it gets over the pads and doesn't get stuck in. Exactly. Like I was picking up a lot more grass than, right. than you were. And then uh, this bait here, this is a, a real shallow diver, but it was catching fish too. Exactly. When we were in, in some of the shallow water and over top of some of the shallower grass, shallower rocks, uh, that guy only dives about three feet on 12 pound line. Uh, again, it's a smaller bait. It it's mimics the size of the, the, the bait fish real good. Uh, the other thing that that perch color is also a color that even though it's a perch color uh, it's got the chartreuses not as bright it's got a nice orange belly on it and I think it mimics a, a small bluegill real good. Yeah they were, they were picking this bait up too and yep. you we could you could fish this as the tide was falling over over, over the grass over, over the, the grass because I couldn't get my bait because it would just get exactly that's when you switched to a spinner right. bait and so this bait will do it so Again, when you're when you're on the river and, or any kind of tidal water conditions, you do have to uh, have a bait ready. Right. You come upon those conditions, just not a big uh, crankbait won't work all the time. Exactly. But you got to have something like that, and also definitely got, rattles. Got some rattles in it. Okay, when you went to the to the small bait, I, I put on my my go-to bait mm -hmm. in the river, and that's the uh, the Durstein spinner bait with my uh, my fat will leaf blades that, that I like to have right. on there. And uh, I picked up some fish on this too. And I, I lost some fish today. I have lost more fish today. <laughs> they just were jumping off. I don't know what the story was. Steve seemed to catch all his, but uh, but I did catch some fish on that. Again, off a point, uh, slow rolling it, letting it flutter, I uh, picked up some fish. Two other baits, Steve, I know that, that you like top water mm -hmm. fishing as sure. much as I do. And it's just uh, your basic pop, pop arb, pop type bait. Um, I like it in this shad color. Yeah. You know, blue and uh, blue and silver. Uh, again, you never know when you're out here, fish might start blowing up at the stripers. Sure. And you can just, you always have one of these tied on and throw it in there and you can, you can pick up yourself some, some nice stripers. And another bait, again, is a, is a buzz bait. Over top of those pads, uh, over top of the weeds and stuff like that. Uh, had some blow-ups on this yeah. today, and one thing I go—I know you had mentioned this morning earlier when we we're getting in the water—was make sure you put that trailer hook. Oh on yeah, there. yeah. I'm a I'm a firm believer in trailer hooks, yeah. and you know a buzz bait's really an, an underrated bait. You know, it's I don't think guys fishing enough, and you know for low level, you know low, low light levels like we had yeah, today, today. This is an all day bait. You exactly. Can you can throw, you throw all it all day, yeah. and a buzz bait does tend to catch a little better quality fish right. on the average than a lot of other baits. Now you're not going to get a small fish. Something's going to blow up on this. Generally, a good fish. Well, that's the tackle box. <laughs> Got this one in the boat anyway. Finally. <laughs> hey, Steve. Thanks for a good day hey. of fishing. Great day, Bob. Tidal water. Delaware River, you got to come down and try it. Small mouths, large mouths. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. I'll see you again on Delaware Valley Outdoors. Hey, don't forget to visit our website, www.dvoutdoors.com, for tide information, weather information. Don't listen to me. I'm not a very good weather forecaster. <laughs> hey, I'll see you again. All right, let's go catch some fish here, buddy. <laughs>